Inflation is now in its fourth week and showing no signs of letting up. This week, President Joe Biden is getting ready to take a trip overseas to meet with his NATO partners there. Dr. Howard Stouffer with the National Security Department at the University of New Haven is joining us this afternoon to talk more about this. Thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you. Can we start with Mariupol, the city on the water there? Talk with us a little more about, uh, obviously, the, the siege, the bombing just has been relentless there. I was reading a few minutes ago, they said every 10 minutes bombs are coming down still. Why is that city so important to Russia? That city sits in the exact place where the Crimea could link up with the Donbass. In other words, the Crimea in the south, which the Russians took in 2014, and the Donbass, which they started uh, demanding uh, Russians live there and sending in little green men in 2016, that city would link up all the Russian forces from all throughout the east into the south and really put uh, the, uh, the Ukrainian forces defending themselves in a very difficult position. So they're, they're, they're using everything they got, totally illegal, totally criminal, to bomb those cities and kill thousands of civilians. I mean, that's what we've been seeing now for days, right, Dr. Stouffer? I mean, we're talking about civilians, people waiting in line for food, getting getting killed. I mean, it's just horrific when you see the images. If they took that city, it would also, Ukraine wouldn't have access to the water on that side, correct? Yes, and which is one of the reasons why that they're fighting so hard to prevent the Russians in the other side of the Black Sea by Odessa, to prevent them from taking Odessa, because that would be the last port they would have on the Black Sea. Uh, and we see, uh, you know, Kershon, which is a city the Russians took, there's now been more Ukrainian resistance coming in to push back those Russian forces. So um, the battles are brutal. And unfortunately, the Russian uh, criminal behavior and the poor uh, uh, activity that their militaries have conducted against all civilians, killing thousands of civilians is a war crime and something that has to be addressed. President Biden is going to Brussels this week. What do you anticipate happening here with this? Well, I think it's an extraordinary meeting of NATO. It'll be important for the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, to show um, that we are there on European soil to lead the 30 countries um, in resisting the Russians. They'll probably be talking about ways to bolster the uh, lethal and um, humanitarian aid going into uh, Ukraine. They probably will talk about if what happens if one of the Russian missiles goes over the border and strikes into uh, Romania or Poland, what would be the standard reaction? And if the Russians actually are foolish enough to, demand, to take on NATO itself, then we will be in a much wider war and things will change dramatically. So I think that all needs to be discussed. And if, of course, the president will be going to Warsaw, again, to show solidarity with the Polish people and the Polish administration, how much they're taking on. They're taking on over 2 million refugees at the moment. Before we let you go, doctor, where do you see this going? I mean, so many people right now wonder how this is going to end. Um, obviously, you know, no one knows for sure what can happen, but uh, do you see Russia at any point saying, OK, we'll leave? Well, it's possible that at a certain point in time, if there's enough pressure in the American and worldwide, I might add, not just American uh, sanctions, start really hurting ordinary Russians, start hurting the Russian economy and putting uh, Putin in some difficulty. I wouldn't say jeopardy, but difficulty. And he might do, be willing to say, OK, I'm willing to negotiate. I'll keep Crimea. I'll keep Donbass. I'll keep some of the additional areas we collected. He may even want all of eastern Ukraine, for I know, all I know, and, um, and then demand that the Russians won't leave unless uh, those demands are met. I doubt that Zelensky will agree to that, the president of Ukraine. But he may ask for that if he feels that uh, you know the loss of soldiers now reaching anywhere from seven to 14,000, maybe more. There might be more soldiers coming in from Belarus and widening the war. He's certainly bringing in soldiers from the Far East and other parts of Russia to deal with the fact that they are losing so much equipment and so many men in, um, in combat. He may feel that the time would be right to take, to take a step back. Um, I'm not very optimistic that's the case, though. Dr. Howard Stouffer from the University of New Haven, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. We appreciate you. your, your help today. Thank you.